Okay, I have finally made it to the Barnes & Nobles, and wow, I haven't been to this Barnes & Nobles forever, but you know what? I'm only at this Barnes & Nobles like twice a year to buy Criterion, so hopefully I can find some good stuff. I mean, I tried putting stuff on hold, but they were like, no baby, we don't do holds anymore, so it is, you know, first come, first serve, and I hate that, but I understand. So yeah, let's go and see what they got. Honey, I really hate how there's only like one row of Criterions here at this store. But you know, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with their selection? Wow, it looks like they have turned the Criterions that were dual packs into just Blu-rays, so good thing I bought this in a dual pack because I think dual packs are fun because they have cool packaging. Or at least they had cool packaging. God, I'm just like, what am I gonna buy? I don't know. Ugh. It looks like a lot of people went and got all the good stuff before I could get here. It's been two days since the sale started, so choices. Choices I had to make because of work. Well, I'm very unhappy that I couldn't really find anything I wanted, but the good news is I ordered stuff online from Amazon and also Barnes & Noble, so hopefully they turn out in pretty good condition, but yeah, I'm gonna fast forward to future Charles who will continue this video now. Cause you're Okay, time has gone by and life has been lived and I am finally back to finish the rest of this video. Okay, so picking off where past Charles left off, this video is all about, you know, the Barnes & Noble's Criterion sale that's going on in the month of July. And I gotta say, July has been a very hectic month. A lot to do with, like, my job and me not having a job anymore. And also, like, the fact that my Barnes & Noble's, the only two nearby me, were very low stocked when it came to all the movies I wanted. So this sale has been a monster. It's been a monster and a pain, to be honest. Watching other people's Criterion hauls online, my mind was just like, this is so unfair because their Barnes & Nobles all seem to be stocked with all the titles that they wanted and they were able to get everything in store while I had to go online and basically get everything online and then I had to go in store to return a good amount of them because my mind was like, oh, these aren't in good condition and the faces on all those employees that had to do all my returns, they were not happy with me. They were not happy with me and I felt crazy and I was basically like, yeah, I'm crazy for returning all of these because I don't think they're in good condition, but you guys do. It was a whole mess. It was a whole mess. I actually had to go venture not only to Bellevue, which is like the regular location I go to here in Washington to go get my Barnes & Noble's Criterions, but I had to go to Northgate too and ugh, Northgate is way past Seattle and... Ugh, it's just such a long drive, but that's the only other place that had Criterion, so I was like, I guess I'll go. And I guess editing me will show you some footage I took of, like, the Criterion, like, area they had there, which I guess was nicer than what they had in Bellevue, like, the setup, in my opinion. And when I went to Northgate for the first time, they had a good amount of stock there. I mean, I think it was, like, the second to last week of the sale, so they had pretty much stocked up of, like, a good amount of the Criterions at that point. But my mind was just like, ugh, why does it have to be like this? Why do I only have two Barnes & Nobles that I can go get these Criterions at? And also they're both kind of far away, so a lot of driving had to be done. Even though I would say this was like kind of the craziest haul I've had to do for this Criterion sale because of how hard it was to get the Criterions I wanted and the amount of driving I had to do and the amount of returns I had to do, I basically got everything I wanted. I mean, the Criterion sale at this point when the video is going to be released is over so at this point I have yeah I've got everything I wanted some of them I wanted but I couldn't get in a good condition so I told myself I'll wait until the next Criterion sale to get these but for the most part I got everything I wanted so yes I'm pretty much happy for the most part for the most part the energy exerted during this you know Criterion haul this time around was a lot a lot more than any of the others I've had to do but I got everything I basically wanted, so I can't be that mad. Okay, with all that said and done, time for me to show you guys what I got at this whole Criterion sale. And man, a lot was bought. A lot was bought. The bank account was broke. And who being unemployed now, I'm just like, was this the right decision? But then again, when I look at all these movies, I'm like, hmm. Yes, yes it was, and it's gonna look real nice when all those movies I've bought for this sale are in this, my wall of movies. They're all gonna be added, it's gonna take a lot of time to like position them in the right like spine numbering on this like wall behind me, but it's gonna look really good, so at the end of the day I'm just like, eh, it's just money, like, 
it's whatever. At least I have all these movies now and they're gonna look really good on this shelf. So aesthetically, at least it will be a boost to my room. Okay, so when it comes to showing all the criterions I got, I'm gonna start with the most recent spy numbers because the way I stacked all these movies on top of each other, the ones that are more recent are easy to get to. So I'm just gonna work my way down from the most recent release that I got all the way down to the most, you know, oldest, the oldest one that I got. Okay, so enough going on about all the stuff that I went through during this Criterion haul. Time to show you guys what I got. Okay, so the first movie I'm going to show you is Spine number 1088, and that is La Pacine from Jacques Duray, starring the amazing Alan Delon, also the amazing Romy Schneider. And yes, I had to get this because it's Alan Delon. He's super hot and I basically own all the criterions with him because he's super hot. And not only is he hot, he's really talented and I heard this movie is basically the movie that A Bigger Splash is based off of so I just had to have it. I just had to have it. Honestly, if you haven't seen A Bigger Splash, you know, the movie that was directed by Luca Guadagnino, I think in the year 2014, I think that's the right year, you know, starring Tilda Swinton and Dakota Johnson and Ralph Fiennes and Matthias, cannot pronounce his last name, but he's great too. Yeah, that's why I love A Bigger Splash and La Pacine was apparently the movie that inspired A Bigger Splash, so I just had to get it because a lot of sexual tension is already in a bigger splash. So if you're already going to be serving me that in La Pacine with Alan Delon and Romy Schneider, then I got to see it. I got to see it and I got to own it. Okay, so the next movie I got was Spine number 1085 and that's Bringing Up Baby starring Katherine Hepburn, Cary Grant, and it's directed by Howard Hawks. And honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of this movie, but I respect it for what it is, a screwball comedy, but this movie came out the same year as another Criterion release of theirs, Holiday, directed by George Kukar. That's the only difference, but it also stars Cary Grant and Katherine Hepburn. And I honestly prefer Holiday over Bringing Up Baby, but a lot of people rather have Bringing Up Baby, but I just love Holiday more. But when I heard this got a release, I said to myself, we have to get it just on the, you know, basis of it starring Cary Grant and Katherine Hepburn. The highlight of Bringing Up Baby for me is when um, Katherine Hepburn takes all of Cary Grant's clothes while he's in the shower, and then he has to come out wearing um, her negligee. Ooh, Cary Grant said, I am rocking this, aren't I? And I said, yes, yes you are, baby. Yes, you are. Ugh bisexual icon Cary Grant. The next movie I have is spy number 1084 and that is Mirror from Andre Tarkovsky and do I really know anything about this movie? A little. I read the plot synopsis online but I really was like let's just go into this blind. I heard it's an amazing movie and I saw a couple of like stills from the movie and those are the things that really sold me on this movie so Hopefully it's good, but look at the packaging. This movie has great packaging, and I did not expect it to be in like this kind of digi pack. I thought it was going to be in a regular jewel case like all the others, but I was surprised. But hopefully this movie like lives up to getting a digi pack because I feel like really special movies should get digi packs, and this one got one, so clearly it has to be really good. I've only watched one Andre Tarkovsky movie before, and that was Stalker because. I said to myself, maybe I should finally watch this movie, and I watched it, and that movie is a mindfuck, but I like it, and I was supposed to have that movie in this haul, but, like, I haven't received it yet from Barnes & Noble, so I don't know if I might show it in this video, because I don't think it's going to arrive by the time I post this video, but... If it ends up on this wall, just know it was a part of this haul. The next movie I have is Spy Number 1083, and that is Pariah. Um, I've heard this movie, I mean heard this movie, I've heard about this movie for the longest time, and it's directed by Dee Rees. I'm pretty sure it's her debut film. And you know, Dee Rees, the girl who did Mudbound, um, yes, that is her. And also that movie with Anne Hathaway, which I thought was going to be good, but wasn't, but we're not going to speak about that movie. But anyway, Pariah, it's an LGBTQ movie, so of course I had to get it because I'm all about like gay shit so yes but have i watched it no but i will watch it and if you haven't watched it get this release or at the very least just go watch it on netflix because i'm pretty sure it's on netflix and come on we gotta support d Rees because we gotta support like black women in the industry 
industry, film industry, more specifically. The next movie I have is Spy Number 1078, and it is Nightmare Alley, directed by Edmund Golding, starring Tyrone Power and others. And I remember when this movie was announced, my mind said, is this kind of like a cross-promotion since Guillermo del Toro's Nightmare Alley comes out at the end of this year. So I rented this movie from my local library and I was blown away by it. It's an amazing movie and Tyrone Power is not only hot, he is hot. No wonder he was a matinee idol because he was fucking hot. But anyway, he's just brilliant in this movie and I really feel like Tyrone Power never got the respect he deserved. He honestly should have gotten an Oscar nomination for this movie and Witness for the Prosecution, but he never did because, you know, the Academy never took him seriously. And it's just such a shame because Tyrone Power is really brilliant in this movie and this movie overall is just really brilliant. And when I read some of the discourse about it, like the behind the scenes stuff, they apparently really didn't like this movie, the studio, and they just buried it, and that really sucks because it's an amazing movie. It's an amazing movie, so if you haven't seen it, go check it out because Nightmare Alley is amazing, and I cannot wait to see the Guillermo del Toro one that's coming out at the end of this year. The next movie I got was Spine Number 1076, which is Merrily We Go to Hell, directed by Dorothy Arzner, starring Frederick Mark and Sylvia... Sydney. I'm pretty sure that's it. If I'm wrong, then I'm sorry. But yeah, I've seen this movie before on the Criterion channel before it left. Dorothy Arsner is also the girl who directed Dance Girl Dance, the one with Lucille Ball that's also in the Criterion collection. And she was one of the first like women directors in Hollywood who got to make movies. And she was also gay. So my mind said, we got to get this to support her. And I remember watching this and thinking, this movie's okay. But I wasn't really paying full attention to it, but I thought it was good. So Hopefully, I can rewatch this and reassess it because, once again, Criterions usually are in this collection. What am I saying? Movies are usually put in the Criterion collection because they have some merit. And some movies, I'm like, I see the merit, but I don't like the movie. So I'm wondering, is this one of those movies where I'm like, I see the merit or, and I don't like the movie? Or is it that I wasn't paying attention to it fully and not appreciating for what it really is and what it delivers? So... Hopefully I can rewatch this and just reassess it. The next movie I got was Spy Number 1075, and that is Fast Times at Ridgemont High, directed by Amy Heckerling, and you know, screenplay based on his book by Cameron Crowe, and it stars a multitude of people. A lot of people who became huge stars like Sean Penn and also Forrest Whitaker and um Jennifer Jason Leahy, that's her name, and a bunch of other people. But yes, I had to get this movie because it's a quintessential high school movie, movie, movie. Yes, my words are being flubbed up today, but it's whatever. Anyways, I had to get this even though it's not my favorite high school movie, but it has merit and... I remember reading that there was supposed to be like male like nudity with Sean Penn, but I don't remember if that was ever shown in the movie, and my mind said, bummer bummer that would have set this movie apart from the others but it's whatever but speaking about amy heckerling um if we're gonna get this on criterion can we get clueless because that is really amy's like masterpiece movie it's a masterpiece movie and it deserves to be in the criterion collection anyway so criterion people get those rights get the rights and make it happen okay so the next movie i have is spy number 1074 and that is irma vep starring maggie chung I'm pretty sure that's how you say her last name. I'm sorry if I screwed it up. I love you, girl. I love you. But yeah, it's directed by Olivier Aceas. Love his work. But yeah, when you rearrange the name Irma Vep, you get like vampire, I'm pretty sure, is the name word that you get after you rearrange it. And I found this movie very interesting. A lot of people kept talking about it being like, one of Aceus's best works. And when I finally saw it, I said, this is pretty great, but I need to rewatch it to really like understand it more. So when it finally got the Criterion treatment, I said, that's going to be one of the first movies I get. And I was really excited when I got it. I was really excited. And I can't wait to rewatch it and also see the special features behind it. And also, did you know they're remaking this? Not remaking it. They're making a TV show about it. I think it's on Stars or one of the premium services starring Alicia Vikander. So... We'll see how that goes, but I really liked a lot of what this movie had to say about, like, independent cinema versus blockbuster cinema. It was just very fascinating. Okay, so the next movie I have is Spine Number 1073, and that is Memories of Murder, directed by Bong Joon-ho, starring Song Kang-ho and someone else. I forget his name, but yes, I remember seeing this movie being like, 
it's good, but for me, not the best. But people were like, when this was announced that it was going to be in the collection, they were like, oh yes, the masterpiece movie from Bong Joon-ho, not Parasite. My mind was like, ooh, maybe I should rewatch this because maybe I was not fully getting it. People were like comparing this to Zodiac, and that's another movie that I'm not like the biggest fan of. So my mind's like, give this another watch because clearly people think it's a masterpiece. And my mind's just like, okay. The next film I have is Spy Number 1072, and that is History is Made at Night. This is an amazing movie. I just randomly like looked it up and watched it on the Criterion channel when I heard it was going to be in the collection. And it's an amazing movie. It is an amazing movie that I really just love so much. It stars Charles Boyer, Gene Arthur, and it's directed by Frank Borzog. I'm pretty sure that's how you say his last name. But yeah, this is an amazing movie. And the end, which the cover artwork depicts, an emotional ending that I thought was going to go very dark. And I was about to be like, respect Hollywood. Respect for going so dark. But when it didn't go as dark as I thought it was going to go, I was like, oh, okay. Still loving the movie, but I thought you guys were going to go there with this ending, but you didn't, but still love the movie. But yeah, check this movie out because it's an amazing movie. It has the romantic comedy aspects, but also heavy drama, and it just serves what you want. It serves you everything, so how could you not like this movie? The next movie I have is Spine Number 1072, and that is Defending Your Life, starring Albert Brooks and Meryl Streep, directed by Albert Brooks, and I'm pretty sure written too. But yeah, this, oh, who else is in this movie? Lee Grant. How could I forget about character actress slash Oscar winner for Best Supporting Actress for Shampoo, Lee Grant. But yeah, this movie, I remember watching it a while ago, I think in 2017 or something, and I thought it was fine, but, you know, it got a Criterion leash, so I said, let me revisit it. This movie in Lost in America from Albert Brooks, it's also in the collection. They're both good, but for some reason, they don't excite me. But I need to rewatch both because maybe now that I've grown older, I'll like them more. Sometimes with movies, I just have to grow and experience more life and then I like them more because I can relate better. But yeah, I really like Meryl in this movie and I'm glad that Meryl got another movie in the Criterion Collection. Now she has this and the French Lieutenant's Woman. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. So we need more Meryl movies in the Criterion Collection, y'all. Get us Julia and Julia because is that the right... Is it Julie and Julia? Julia and Ju- I'm pretty sure it's Julia and Julia. Pretty sure that's the name of that movie because that movie's a lot of fun and honestly, it's one of Meryl's best performances, so y'all should get on that. That or The Devil Wars Prada because that movie is iconic and it's a landmark film and it's just amazing in general and I think that the Criterion Collection should try to get the rights from Fox because that movie deserves to be in the Criterion Collection because if you know, you know, you guys. If you know, you know. Next, I have Spine Number 1070, and that is Secrets and Lies, directed by Mike Leahy, starring Brenda Blethyn and Marianne Jean-Baptiste. God, that's a long name. And I forget the other guy who's in this movie, but it's a pretty great movie, Secrets and Lies. People have been telling me for the longest time, watch Secret and Lies. It's a great movie. And when I finally got myself to watch it on the Criterion channel, like, months ago, I said to myself, oh, they weren't lying. They weren't lying. This movie is brilliant, and it's one of Mike Leahy's best movies. For me personally, I think his best movies are Secrets and Lies and Bear Drake. I haven't seen Naked, though, and a lot of people like Naked, but I think Secrets and Lies and Bear Drake are just top tier. They're just top tier movies. Topsy Turvy. I think that's a great movie, but I think that's a bit too long, so that's why I have to say Secrets and Lies and also Bear Drake are his best. Another year... Is that what the movie's called? Another Year, Another Life, that movie that has Leslie Manville in it? Deserves a Criterion release, you guys. That movie deserves a Criterion release as well. Leslie Manville, she should have gotten an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress in that movie. She was heartbreaking. She was heartbreaking. But yeah, Secrets and Lies, it is a heartbreaking movie. Family drama, oh my god. Get ready to get in your feelings if you watch this movie. Damn, that was like half the movies that I've bought so far. And ugh, the heat is really getting to me right now. I mean, look at my chest right here, like the exposed part of my chest. Like, ooh, it is so sweaty. 
this is not the mood, this is not the vibe. I'm trying to keep a whole aesthetic while I'm making this, but the heat's trying to kill me. Oh yeah, I totally forgot to say, I already opened three of my Criterions and they're already on like the shelf behind me. So let me show you guys what they are real fast. I should have said them earlier, I'm pretty sure, because their spine numbers came up like before the last one I showed you, Secrets and Lies, but let me just show you them real fast. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna show you is spine number 1086, which is Deep Cover, directed by Bill Duke. I'm pretty sure it's Bill Duke. Bill Duke? Yes. For some reason I wanted to say Billy, but it's Bill, and it stars you know, Lawrence Fishburne and Jeff Goldblum. I haven't really watched this movie, but I heard that it's great. I opened it because I thought there was something wrong with the artwork sleeve, and my mom was like, do I wanna just like try to return this and then try for a new one, or do I just wanna open it and see if it's good? So I just rolled the dice and I opened it, and it was good. I was just like seeing something that was easily like removed once you took off the you know shrink wrap so it's open and I gotta watch this because I haven't watched it before but I heard it's really good so can't wait to watch it. The next movie is Spine number 1077 and that is The Flowers of Shanghai and I had the same situation with like you know um, Deep Cover and also the next movie I thought something was wrong with them but this one there's like a dent in the back so I should have like looked closer but it's whatever I'll just like sell this eventually and get a better version of it but yeah this movie I don't know the, how to pronounce the director's name so I'm so sorry director but this movie stars Tony Leung I'm pretty sure that's how you say his last name I'm so bad sometimes by not prepping and learning people's names before I say them but you know the icon from you know the Chunking Express in the mood for love and a bunch of other stuff but Oh my god, I love Tony. I recently saw Lust and Caution, and he was great in that movie. So I've seen some stills from this movie. The movie looks beautiful, and I cannot wait to see what goes on in this movie, to be honest, because I don't really know the plot. All I know is that it takes place in a brothel, so I guess Tony's like the brothel like owner or something, but we'll see, we'll see. Oh, this movie I'm going to show you next is actually the one that's after, or I guess before, you know, Secrets and Lies, and that is Spine number 1069, which is Celine and Julie Go Boating, directed by Jacques Rivette. And this movie is basically kind of like a French version of Alice in Wonderland. You're just going down the rabbit hole. There's fourth dimension wall breaking in the third act. Um, we get people who become friends and they go on kooky adventures and they do a lot of crazy stuff. And this really felt to me like I was in a washing machine spinning around while trying to get a grasp of what was happening in this movie. But I liked what was going on, especially in the first and third act. The second act, my mind kind of turned to mush. But like that third act, when they break the fourth wall and they're like, let's go save this girl in our dreams. I was like, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about, you guys. But yeah, this movie, it's crazy, but I like it. Well, we've made it to the halfway point of my Criterion haul. And I gotta say, if you're still here, I'm impressed because I probably would get bored and annoyed or just disinterested at this point about what I had to say. But if you're still here, thanks a lot for that. So without further ado, let's get into the last half of what I got. The next movie I have is Spy Number 1063 and that is The Ascent and it's directed by Larissa. Cannot pronounce her last name, but apparently this is a great movie. I don't really know much about it. I kind of heard that it was kind of horror. I guess maybe horror in like a realism kind of way, but I'm pretty sure she's like the wife of Andre Tarkovsky. If I'm wrong, then I guess I'm about to be burned at the stake, but if I'm right, I get to live another day. I get to live another day. Hopefully I'm right. If I'm not, then oh, but yeah. I just heard that this is a great film, and apparently it was her last film, so... I'm pretty sure this was in one of Martin Scorsese's like world cinema box sets, so it has to be good if Martin says it's good. The next movie I have is Spy number 1007, and that is Until the End of the World, directed by Wim Wenders, and it stars William Hurt, and I don't know how to pronounce the girl's name, but yeah, this movie is, whew, it really is an odyssey. It's over four hours long, and I'm not gonna lie, my brain turned to mush by the time the movie finished, but I would have to say, like, my mind really went in and out of watching this movie. There were a lot of good parts in this movie, but there were a lot of, like, boring and kind of confusing parts in the movie, but that last, like, hour really, like, got me right back into the movie, and 
I think it's just an amazing movie, and it took me a while to get this movie, but I finally got it. The next movie I have is Spine Number 909, which is Night of the Living Dead, directed by George Romero, and this movie is a quintessential, you know, zombie movie, and I think it's pretty great, and it has a lot of good commentary, and yeah, I just was putting this off for the longest time, because I wasn't the most excited about this movie, like, about, you know, trying to buy it, but eventually I was like, okay, it's a... It's about time to buy it. We gotta buy it. So I got it. And I can't wait to rewatch this during Halloween because I feel like it really should be watched during like a spooky season. The end of the Night of the Living Dead really screams America. I mean, how American can you get other than that ending? I mean, come on now. Like, spilling the tea, spilling the tea, George Romero. Yes. The next movie I have is Spy Number 845, and that is The Squid and the Whale, directed by Noah Baumbach, starring Jeff. Daniels, yes, Laura Linney, Jesse Eisenberg, and other people including Anna Paquin, Academy Award winner Anna Paquin. But yeah, this movie, I didn't really like it on my initial watch, but hearing other people talk about it and like explain it more, my mind said, oh, this is one of those movies where I let like the story really make me not like the movie in general because I wasn't seeing what the story was trying to convey. I just was like, I don't like what's going on here. So I sometimes have to learn to put what I feel about the movie, like what's happening in the story aside and see what the story is actually trying to convey. And this is one of those movies where I really could not see past what was happening in the story to see what it was trying to say completely. But, you know, after like a while of like thinking about it, I was like, oh, okay, that's what this movie is trying to say. Got it. Got it. So I just had to get it because I really do like this artwork. And also... I was like, why not? I do like No One Bum Back, so why not buy this? The next movies, movie, movies, I think it's movies since it's like a two-pack movie, basically. But anyway, the next movies are Spine Number 796 and 797, which are The Emigrants and The New Land. It is directed, it, they are both directed by Jan Troell. I'm pretty sure that's how you say his last name, but I'm not sure. And it stars the iconic Liv Ullman and also Max von Sydow. He's a legend too. He's a legend too. But yeah, I heard this movie, movie, movies are like an odyssey for immigrants. And I saw like a trailer for it and I said, that's great. And for the longest time, I've been wanting to check this movie out and buy it. But all the versions I saw in stores were garbage. But when I was at Northgate, I saw this. There were four copies of this movie, and this one was the best one. And it had the director's seal. Most of the time, when I found this in stores, they didn't have the director's seal. And for some reason, I thought he was dead, but apparently he's not. So I was like, yes, get this one since it's in great condition, and it has a director's like seal of approval with the signature, which I love. So yeah, I got this, and whenever I have like over four hours to shell out, more than four hours. I think altogether this is over five hours, both movies. Who it's gonna be a ride, but I heard it's great, so I can't wait to watch it. Man, this heat is killing me, but I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. I'm more than halfway there, so the next movie I have is Spine Number 793, which is The American Friend, directed by Wim Renders, and I don't really know much about this movie other than it's like a continuation of the Tom Ripley story, and I love the talented Mr. Ripley. I think that movie is amazing. Purple Noon, not as good, but you know, sorry. They really freaked it in The Talented Mr. Ripley. It's better than The Purple Noon. But yeah, I just had to get this movie because it's in really good condition. And also, when I got it, and also, I just said, mm, I like Wim Wenders' work, so why not get this and see how he goes with the character of Tom Ripley. Hopefully there's some gay shit in here, but I'm not like confident since this was made a long time ago but hey if there's even at least subtextual stuff i'm good i'm good the next movie is spine number 777 and that is the brew directed by david cronenberg and this movie is not his strongest movie but also it's not his worst i would have to say it's like middle tier cronenberg but I think it's still pretty horrific, and the body horror going on in this isn't as, like, crazy as some of his other movies, but it's still pretty good. This is pretty, like, average Cronenberg, if you ask me, but Samantha Eggers is amazing in this movie, and uh, I would like this movie a lot more if I didn't know it was based off his feelings toward his ex-wife and the divorce that was going on when he was writing this. It just feels very nasty and feels very, like, of course it's going to be his perspective, but I don't know. It just feels kind of slimy and gross. 
if you ask me. The next movie I have is Spine number 556 and that is Senso directed by Lucio Visconti and I don't really know much about the movie but I've seen some stills from it and it looks gorgeous and people say it's a gorgeous looking movie so I said to myself let's just check it out and also I know the Criterion Collection is planning on releasing um, Visconti's movie The Dam later on in the year in time for the next sale. So I said to myself, let me just get this movie. That way I have a Visconti movie in my collection. I also ordered uh, The Leopard, but it hasn't arrived yet. So that's another movie where I'm like, mm, I wish it could be in this video, but... It's just not, so I had to just tell you. The next movie I have is Spine number 422, and that is The Last Emperor, directed by Bernardo Bertolucci. And I've only ever seen one movie from him, which is The Conformist, and I honestly just saw it yesterday. And I think that movie is great, so hopefully this movie is great too. I mean, it swept the Oscar season it was in, so... Hopefully it's good, and it's not just one of those things where people were like, ah, it's a spectacle, so give it everything, because that would be horrible, but... Yeah, hopefully this movie is good. The next movie I have is Spy Number 339, which is Yee Yee, directed by Edward Yang. And I've seen this movie before. It was great, but a bit too long if you ask me. But I would love to rewatch it now. And yeah, I don't really remember the plot of the movie. I think we were just following the lives of a family. So hopefully I can rewatch it and get more of a memory of what happened because all I remember is that I think the movie is great but I can't really remember much about it. The next movie I have is Spine number 308 which is Masculine et Feminine from Jean-Luc Godard. I've never like really been super into Jean-Luc Godard's work and especially since like I learned about how he bashed Jane Fonda in his like really weird letter to Jane after she did um god what's that movie called? Tu va bien. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, the movie she did with Godard, but I think Godard's a pretty good director. I mean, I like um, Contempt. I'm pretty sure that was him. Contempt. And also um, Pierre Le Fou. I like that too, but I don't like Weekend. Weekend is not a good movie. But yeah, I heard this was pretty good. Oh no, I've seen Le Petit Soledad. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. That was fine. But yeah, I heard this one was like very interesting with its like message it's trying to convey about society and like pop culture in general so I said let me check this out and it's one of the early criterions that just got a new blu-ray release so I said hopefully it's good and hopefully it was worth the buy I mean if it's not worth the buy I'll just sell it but hopefully it is because even though I have like a love-hate relationship with Godard I do think the movies I like from him are like really good and that he is a really good director. Contempt, his best movie. When are we getting the Criterion release of that, huh? When are we getting that? The next movie I have is Spine number 224 and that is Pick Up on South Street directed by Samuel Fuller and this movie is one that is basically a blind buy. I don't really know much about it then it's like a crime noir so a lot of people were saying it's great and it was selling out a lot on the Barnes & Noble's website and it just went back in stock in stores and I believe it's out of stock now again on the website so clearly it has to be good for everyone to be buying it so I got it and hopefully it's good. I think I've only seen one other movie from Samuel Fuller and I think that was Shot Corridor and I thought that movie was good but not great so hopefully this one is better than that. The next movie I have is Spy Number 176 which is The Killers directed by Robert cannot pronounce his last name. It's a dual version because there's two versions of The Killers that came out and this contains both of them. I've only watched the version with Burt Lancaster and Ava Gardner and that's a great one but I want to see the other one because it stars John Cassafetes, so maybe it's good. It has to be because they have a dual pack, but then again, A Magnificent Obsession has both versions of A Magnificent Obsession, and I don't know if the like one that came out first is better than the one that Douglas Sirk directed, so we'll see. But this was one that I wanted for a long time, but I could never get in a really good condition, but I finally got it in good condition, so yay me. The next movie I have is Spy number 116 and that is The Hidden Fortress from Akira Kurosawa and I don't really know much about this movie other than it has something to do with like a princess and there's a secret. Her identity has to be kept a secret. Something like that. But you know, I said to myself I need more Akurosawa movies in my collection and I heard this was great so I said beam me up Scotty and get me this movie because 
it's a Kurosawa. He hasn't let me down one bit. None of his movies I've seen have let me down, so this is probably going to be good. Okay, and the last thing I have to show you is spine number 52 and also 53. It is the Yojimbo and the San um, Juro, San Juro box set from, you know, Akira Kurosawa. It is, uh, you know, samurai movies, I'm pretty sure. It is a continuation, part one and two, basically. Um, I, once again, this is a blind buy, so I don't know much about it, but I heard it's good. It might be even, like, better than Seven Samurai. Honestly, Seven Samurai, I like that movie, but at the same time, I'm like, eh, about it. I can see how people really love Seven Samurai and how a lot was derived from Seven Samurai, but I feel like Akira Sawa has much better works that people should be looking at, like High and Low and Throne of Blood. But yeah, this movie, I just said, let me get this. And it was also cheaper to buy in this box set than individually, so I said, here we come, box set. Okay, and with that, those are all the Criterions I got at this Criterion sale, but wait, no, that's a lie. I just remembered since that was like a box set I just did, I did get two box sets. Okay, so the second box set I got was the Louis Bernal, Bern, Bunel, I'm pretty sure that's how you say his last name, I'm not completely sure, but yeah, this box set from him, and I saw the discreet charm of the bourgeois, and I was pretty impressed with that movie, and like, the way Bunel was able to convey a lot of messages about class without really outright saying it. Everything was basically a visual metaphor, and I thought, man, what a brilliant way to do that. So I thought to myself, this box set looks good, and, you know, why not? Why not? I already have Belle de Jour from him, so I said, might as well get this, that way I can see the other two movies in this box set. Okay, and the final thing I got during this haul, the basically crown jewel of this haul, how could I have forgotten that I got this? Maybe it's because I got the very start of the sale, but anyways, the last thing I'm going to show you that I got during this haul was the iconic Wong Kar Wai box set. Oh, I don't want no mm -mm, the ring light glare, uh, but whatever. It's whatever. But yeah, I got this box set. It's iconic. Do I already own In the Mood for Love and the Chungking Express? Yes. Yes, I do. But this has fallen angels and days of being wild and happy together. So, ooh, there are a lot of movies in this box set I want to see. I heard that Wong Kar Wai messed with the color grade of a lot of the movies. So, I don't know how it's going to work, but hopefully the ones that I want to watch are still looking great. So that's all I want to say about that. Okay, and with that, I have finally shown you guys everything I got during this Criterion sale. So yeah, this was a long video. This was a long video to shoot. It's probably going to be a long video to edit. My god, editing Charles is going to have his work cut out for him. But yeah, tell me down below in the comments what you guys got during this sale because... Ooh, I spent a lot of money doing this sale, but you know what? I think it's worth it, and you know, a lot of people like seem to be getting a lot of criterion, so it's whatever, because as long as you're spending the money on things that make you happy, then it's whatever. It is going to be one hell of a task, not only to edit this video, but also to, you know, put all my criterions I just showed you guys behind me in the correct order with the rest of the criterions behind me, because I really like you know, putting my things in spine order, so it's going to be a lot of work not only putting them behind me in the right order in the shelf behind me, but also moving all my Blu-rays overall because the Criterions are at the very start of my collection and then it goes down to like all the other Blu-rays I have, so it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. Seriously, since I've started this channel, I've been talking about doing my complete like Blu-ray collection like video and I haven't gotten around to that because I've been lazy and also the weather's never been that right and I just know it's gonna be a tiring process but you know what I'm about to reach my year anniversary mark so hopefully hopefully I will start on that video video collection of videos like at least around the time I hit my year mark on YouTube. Anyways, you guys, thank you for coming to my channel and watching this whole video. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video if you're around for that. So until then, I'm gonna go now. So yes, mm-hmm. Yep, I'm gonna go because it's hot now. So yes, bye.